Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about overlooking things. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what is the most overlooked thing in programming, according to you? And I think this is a great question. So the short answer is alignment. That is the most overlooked thing. What I mean by that is pretty much that the thing that I keep on seeing pretty much all the time and I feel like almost every company is struggling with is the alignment of people within that company. It is almost, it seems at least, to be almost impossible to get all your ducks in a row and to get everybody to have a shared vision of what it is that you are going to do. I find that it's one of two things usually. Either you are working in an environment where people don't give a shit at all like most people, they are just pretty much apathetic to how, how the company's doing. They're pretty much apathetic to how to achieve certain goals. They're really only there to, make, to get a paycheck of some sort. And the other perspective is, or the other t case is that everybody's pretty much, uh, they are engaged, but they can't align on how to do things. There, it's kind of chaos that you know, there's tons of ad hoc decisions and people are like talking over here and then some people are talking over there. The right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing and then it turns out that, oh shit, there's a bunch of miscommunications here and now we built something that isn't really the thing that these people here were saying to these people over here. These are usually the issues that I believe that leads to, well, mostly the, the reason why, as to why companies have problems with ve developer ve development velocity. It's also the root cause to scalability problems. It's also the root cause to quite a lot of the legacy. Not all the legacy, because developers are really good at producing legacy by themselves, but this definitely helps. For sure it helps. And this is something that I've faced at every single, pro single company. It's, uh, I, I, I'm not sure if it is possible to truly solve this problem at a company-wide level to get everybody, because that's the problem. The more people you need to align and have synchronized at the same time, the harder it becomes. And by necessity, we kind of start splitting out larger companies into different departments, because it's easier to align people in one department with a fewer amount of people than it is to align an entire company on some type of, over, of overall vision. And it is, it is especially hard to keep people and keep people committed to some type of company mission or something like that in the larger corporation. Because I, I mean, it, humans are, were never designed to feel an emotional connection in general to something that feels like it's like a billion type, of, it's a billion dollar industry type of thing. It's so massive that if you feel like this tiny, tiny little car, you don't really feel like you have any impact on what's going on. You're basically just filling up a position somewhere. It's very hard for people to like emotionally get connected to something like that. It's easier when it's kind of up close and it's on a smaller scale where you feel like everything that you do has a major impact on the company or whatever it is that you are doing right. I usually say that if you want people to do, donate money to save for to saving different uh, saving people or saving children or something like that. Don't ask them on television to donate to a starving kid somewhere. Put the starving child in their hands and you will see the money start, is going to start coming out. At least a lot more at least than by just seeing something on television because it feels unapproachable. But for smaller companies, this is sort of, the, it's, it's the same problem. It's just in a different fashion where you don't have any processes, you don't really align on things and you have all these different managers who usually are in their late 20s, early 30s and they're kind of not, like, and developers as well, where they're not really used to working as part of a team, they're not really reflecting so much on how what they're doing fits into how what other people are doing. I face this problem myself at my company or at my new team that I've switched to, where I can, like, when I started, I can very, I could very clearly see that everything in this entire team goes down. It comes down to one single developer. This person knows everything about the system, and all the people around him knows absolutely fuck all about the system. 
and I was warning, I was actually warning them, like, guys, you, we cannot have this. We need to actually have a, we need to align on what is required of each individual at, in this team in order for this team to be a well-balanced group of people that can solve all these problems that we need. We can't just have this person know everything and nobody listened and then this person he, he, he congratulations to him because he became a father went on paternity leave for luckily these th this was just two weeks and the whole team collapsed just as i had said that it would because nobody could answer any of the questions there was no he, there was no one he literally had to call in on a few occasions just to answer questions and this was like to the person who was our team lead could not didn't know this sort of stuff right because he was the only person so the, the, so what what i basically did was to attempt the thing that i think that is the thing that is being overlooked quite often and that is to actually evaluate the different the different parts that needs to happen in order for you to consistently produce good results within a team or ideally within a company. And that usually comes down to this horrible word that everybody hates, which is process. Now, I believe that you should never go too wild with process. You shouldn't, because that's the thing that usually happens at the larger companies and some extreme cases with tech leads and stuff like that. They think that the solution to every problem is to add a confluence page or a process or a to-do or something or add another stand-up or another meeting and they go, they become addicted to meetings. That, at least in my opinion, is not the way to go about this. The way to go about this is to figure out the least amount of process that you can possibly produce that ends with everybody in that group of people that you're trying to align having the same vision of what it is they're doing, both short term and long term. That you can achieve by actually just tweaking a few things. It didn't take us all that long in my team today to actually get to a point where we went from pretty much everybody just kind of doing their own thing and ad hoc decisions. And I mean, they, we could never consistently produce good results. We were like, we were like, it was chaos. It was absolute chaos to actually now having a consistent process that actually is now moving on. We, we actually had the expected results at the end of every sprint. And we've also started been able to start knowledge sharing to the point where now this person who is so was so critical for this team has become a little bit less critical, which is well, depending on how you look at it, a good thing or a bad thing. But for the team, it is a good thing because now we don't shut, we can, we don't have to close down shop as soon as this person has a cold. So what I want you to take away from this is that the at least in my world, the most overlooked thing in. IT or software development in general is this the alignment how important aligning people on a joint vision short term and long term how how important that is because if you can't get people to be committed to to working as as a group or you don't have a process for how you're going to share knowledge or how you're going to make sure that you keep down your bugs or you don't have a process for how to how to set expectations and then deliver on those expectations, quality assurances, all of these sorts of things. You will have a chaotic work environment. But on the other hand, if you go too wildly into this sort of thing, as, which is usually the case at larger companies, you will feel like you're crushing people with process and they will actually just feel emotionally distant. They will distance themselves. They will, start, will stop caring because they feel like they have no impact. So figuring out just the right amount of internal team processes that will end in that goal, as I said, you have the same vision, short term and long term. That is a talent and if you can master that you will be surprised at how much of a difference it's going to make for your for the work that you do at your company have a great day